Okay, balances again. It's not something people spec, but antenna engineers know it. You may have heard of it. It stands for balance from unbalance. Okay, what the hell is all of this about? Let me just explain because it does illuminate why if you do use dipoles, which is often the better solution. And I will show if you use, for example, uh, Vivaldi's. Those are balanced antennas, meaning that the one half is the same as the other half. Okay. So this is my famous drawing, and this, oh, sorry, the one I off is the same as the other, okay? And the way you connect it, uh, if you're using coax cable, which unfortunately we mostly use, is you've got a coaxial cable, and it's outer, you connect to this one side. Then it's got an inner cable that goes in the middle of the coax, and the rest of the coax goes down. Okay. The reason why this is unbalanced is the current there is always equal to the current on the inside because on the coax there's the middle port. So there's the middle part. You can consider the wall to be a certain thickness. And this current going, say, in is always equal to that current running on the inside that's going out. That's fully shielded because they cancel. You don't see any radiation from those currents. But of course, if you now look at this guy here and you want to create a computer model of it, you say there's a voltage source, which is the inner to the outer, and then there's the one dipole. This is the one connected to the ground. And what do you see? You actually see there's a conductor, which is the outer of the coax. That is what the outer world sees, connected to this guy. And that causes a major problem because what now happens is those two currents are equal, the inside little one coming the other way. And they would have created, if you just use that too, you would have created a beautiful symmetrical type of current on that guy. But there's a baddie, there's a current that will also now potentially flow on the outside of the coax. That unbalanced current, and it's caused by radiation causing currents to flow here, okay? Because this guy is exposed to the antenna radiation. That cancels, it reduces this, and now you could sit with this. Okay, problem one. So now you sit with an antenna, that's an unbalanced antenna. Boom, boom. Okay, the, you can almost see that the pattern from this, where it's normally a maximum in the middle, it may now be pointing like that. First problem. Second problem. This guy here is now becoming part of the radiator. You could see it here. So it will also contribute some kind of radiation. So a real nasty thing, and people somehow have forgotten it. I've seen antennas now where the people design antennas that are supposed to be balanced fit, and they don't bother to use a balen. Balen, something, and we've got very clever ones, um, something that you introduce here between the feet and the antenna. And one of my favorites is where you start off with a white piece of PC board and you taper the ground plane of the PC board that's attached to this ground plane, the inner side you keep, and at some point they become balanced. And the reason why this guy is so wonderful is balance. People used to design balance for narrow band because radio comms often just use the narrow frequency band. Now we want to go wide. And this guy here is very broad band. And you can see it's balanced as long as this length here at the limit must be at least a quarter wave, but say half wave length, half wave length at the lowest frequency. Okay, so um, very important. And if you don't do that, the advantages of a, of a, a dipole, which is ground independent, it's all lost.